Outside? Outside? We're outside. Hey mamas, it's Lissa and we're coming at you with day 11. Fantastic fantasy day. All right, wow. It has been so overcast that now that there is any sunshine out, my eyes are like, So don't mind my squintiness. So glad you guys are joining me today. Just remember if you haven't already, like it, hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell so you know when the new ones come out. We've only got a couple more days of this and then we'll be moving back to our originally scheduled broadcast. I don't know about you ladies and gents, but I have always been a, a fantasy geek at heart. That's the only way to say it. I so enjoy fantastical stories, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion, The Book of Lost Tales, and the fact that I'm mentioning all of these Tolkien books that probably no one has read or heard of should just go to show you that fantasy at heart, sci-fi at heart, I love it. So today, it only makes sense that we go on some kind of an epic adventure because we've been in here for almost two weeks or more and we're gonna make this a great day to behold. Now, some things that you can do to make this enjoyable with your children is simple. Find a fantasy movie or book that you can watch or read out loud. My mom started reading the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe series to us when we were, I don't even know, like seven or eight. And she would do the voices and we would cuddle up and snuggle in her bed and she would read a chapter a night. And we always looked forward to it because she would keep it, like we were in suspense. We'd be like, no, read more. No, no, we're only reading a chapter. And it taught us to anticipate and look forward to things. And that's, I think, one thing that a great story does. It keeps you wanting more. It keeps you looking for the next thing. And you can start teaching your children to have expectation and to look with hope and excitement towards things that are coming up which let's be honest, in this time, we kind of need that. Another option is whatever movie or book that you decide to partake in, see what you can do to theme things around that. So if you are watching Harry Potter and you've got some old chopsticks, like heck, bust out the glitter and glue and make some wands. I don't know, I, I'm not a big Harry Potter buff, but that could be fun, right? And if you are all about the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Take your kids on an adventure and go check every closet just to make sure Narnia hasn't popped up. Or pretend it has. Pretend Narnia has popped up. Go into the closet and come out and have an adventure of your own like the Pevensey kids. If you are going for something like Lord of the Rings, have your kids create a character. Be an elf. Be a whatever. Do your story together. Um, I'm gonna age myself and also geek myself here. Um, when <laughs> the internets were fairly young, um, I don't know if anyone remembers when Yahoo used to have groups which were like, they could be based around sports or different things. Well, there were role playing groups. And in high school, I got really into these. I know, so sad but especially Lord of the Rings ones. We created characters, we wrote them, um, they were ongoing stories where you had your character and you would write what was happening and then the next person would respond and write what they did in response to what you did. It's so much fun and so you can do this verbally, you can do it um, writing, encourage your kids to have imagination, encourage them to come up with a character. My character was an elf, her name was Elderese. She, uh, came from Mirkwood, if I remember correctly. There was a whole thing, um, and her best friend was split, and he was a half ape, half, I don't even know, but he had a psychic ferret. Now that I'm an adult, that sounds kind of weird. Not as weird as when I met that guy in person. No, oh, that was weird. Another thing that you can do is if there is a type of food that is well known in the book or the story, see what you can do to make it at home. Um, I jokingly referenced Turkish Delight. Probably not going to be able to make Turkish Delight, but we could do beans on toast, I guess, if we wanted to. Um, we could make a lion themed, like a pancake that looks like a lion, or we could have tea like Mr. Tumnus had. Um, there's lots of things that you could do. If you're doing Harry Potter, make some butter beer. If you have jelly beans, or if you're going to be getting groceries, pick up some jelly beans just randomly and you can pretend they're those every flavor bean things that they eat in there. Um, there's a lot of fun things that you can do to again keep with the theme keep with the story keep with the imagination and make it something that your kids can look forward to 
most kids like an opportunity to put a cape on, put a, a cloak on with a hood. You can pin sheets very creatively and they can look very legit. Um, if your kids have princess costumes or prince costumes or Harry Potter costumes or whatever the case is, uh, that could be a great opportunity um, to put those on. You might've had them from Halloween a couple years ago. Bust them back out, go on an adventure. Just some ideas. If let's say you're doing Harry Potter, you could make a Marauder's map and have the kids have to sneak around and avoid things. I don't know. Um, or you could have them play Quidditch with brooms in the backyard. Backyard. Play Quidditch. I'm guessing you'd kind of play it like soccer just with a ball. I'm sure. I'll look. Maybe there's a YouTube tutorial on how to play Quidditch. If there is, I'll put it down below and you can do that. Um, if you are, again, embracing Lord of the Rings or something like that, you could have them climb trees and pretend they're ints. If you're doing Chronicles of Narnia, you could have your kids play freeze tag because the White Witch turns people to stone. So someone could be the White Witch and someone could be Aslan and, you know, you could run around um, doing freeze tag. If you're doing Lord of the Rings, you could do a scavenger hunt for the ring. You could hide a ring or hide some kind of piece, like, you know, a gold, or not gold, a yellow construction paper circle, whatever the case is, whatever represents the ring. You could hide it and leave them clues and they have to find the clues and then go find the ring and then destroy it. Like there are so many things that you can do to incorporate these stories, to trigger your kid's imagination. I highly encourage you to do this. If you've done no other day, Day, no other day do fantasy day because if there's anything we need right now it's hope and we need to understand that even though trials come and there are situations that alter everything and change everything we know it as we know it hope comes just a reminder again like this video go ahead and subscribe hit the notification bell so you know when we have new videos coming out I'm really excited for tomorrow it is top chef day and we're cooking. That's right, Caden. Caden tackled his first cooking project with Mima. And it's gonna be good. And let me just say, this is yummy. It was really yummy. So keep an eye out for tomorrow. Top Chef Day. Well, that's it for today, mamas. I'm so glad you were able to join us. Make sure to let us know in the comments what movie or book did you guys end up doing? What adventure did you go on? Do your kids even like fantasy? I don't know, maybe not, but I mean, who doesn't like an epic story?